Welcome back. When I first started this channel, I looked at a number of Timexes, and the main reason for that is just because they're really affordable and really easy to get a hold of, but it's been quite some time since I looked at one. But today changes that. And this is a Timex I actually got late in the summer, and I've just been holding on to it waiting for the right time to talk about it, as I think this is currently one of the most interesting Timexes out there. And no, this isn't another video about the Timex Q, because honestly, I just really don't get the appeal there. But this is part of the American Document series, which came out last April. And let's just get this out of the way. This is not a watch I think most people would want to buy, but I do think it's an interesting watch to talk about. And I really haven't seen too many people cover it. Most of you won't want it because it's really rather overpriced. Sort of. It's kind of complicated. The MSRP is $495, so basically 500 bucks. And you're basically getting just a really simple quartz watch. But a good chunk of what you're paying for is really just the idea behind it. You know, the ideal or the vision of American watchmaking and kind of bringing it back which is really what I'm interested in here. And if you've watched the channel for some time, you know I have an interest in American watchmaking. And the American Document series is the most American-made watch that Timex has made in a long time. And it might be one of the most American-made watches currently available, period. However, it doesn't quite qualify to be made in the USA. The United States is really strict about that. Not only does everything have to be made here, but even the source materials have to come from the United States. And I believe that everything with the American Document series qualifies for that, except for the movement, which means the case, style, hands, and strap. And from what I've read, Timex really went to great lengths to make this happen. They actually cleared out a space in their headquarters for the assembly, but then outsourced the manufacturing of the various components. The thing is, no one in the United States is actually making watch parts anymore. So not only did Timex have to source US steel and copper for this, but they actually had to track down companies who might have the capability, but had never tried to make watch components before. And then not only teach them how, but also convince them to make those parts in really small batches. Which means the creation of these watches was not only a very time consuming process, but a pretty expensive one at that. And in a lot of ways, this is really just kind of an experiment in American watchmaking. And I really wanted to take a look at one when I first heard about it. But even for me, 500 bucks is a big pill to swallow for this watch. So I actually held off until I just happened to find a deal on one and ran across this particular one on eBay for about half that, which is still quite a bit for a quartz watch. But one of the reasons I love doing this channel is because it lets me buy a watch like the American Document series and then share it with you. So I think the big question here is if the end result of this whole process is worth it and enough to convince consumers to really invest in it. And for that, we really have to take a closer look. And the best way to do that is by starting with the specs. So we are looking at a 41 millimeter watch without the crown and just under 44 width. And it's also just a tad long with a lug to lug of 49. Yet it's also a very thin watch with a total thickness of 9.7. It's also pretty lightweight at 58 grams with its leather strap. So it's just one of those watches that you can put on and completely forget you're wearing. The case is a really simple design, but I do think it's nicely made. It's US source stainless steel that is drop forged, and Timex says that this is a first for American watchmaking. Overall, it has a very nice brush satin finish, but as I said, it's pretty simple looking. There's no beveled edges or any sort of changes in the finishing until you get to the top with the fixed polished bezel. And that bezel is very nicely done. It's hand polished with this mirror-like finish. Yet when you're looking down on the case, it's that bezel that's really the only visual appeal here. Although it is a nice contrast between the two finishes. My only real complaint with the case is that the edges on the case back and in between the lugs are a bit sharp, especially for the price. Now looking at the case from the side, you can see just how thin it actually is. It's just sort of sandwiched in between the case back and the bezel. And the case back here is really one thing that I do love. The main part is brushed to match the case, with just the model number etched into it but at its center is an embedded beautiful brass coin, which is one of the things that just visually sets this watch apart, and the imagery on it just really emphasizes that dream of American watchmaking, 
which is really what you're buying into here. And the crown also has a matching brass insert. And the brass itself is just really a callback to Timex's heritage and roots being from Waterbury, Connecticut, which at one point was known as the Brass City. And from this angle, you can also see some of the design choices that were put into the strap. Where on one side, you once again have the continental United States. But on the other side, they did make sure to include Alaska, as well as a very tiny Hawaii. The strap is only genuine leather, but I do think it's very well made. It's sourced from US hides and done by SP Foot Tanning Company in Red Wing, Minnesota, which is really Red Wing boots. The strap might be a little thin, but I do think it has a good texture and it's pretty flexible, which means it's just really comfortable to wear. Now, going back to the front, we can see what I think is one of the most interesting design choices, and that's the crystal. And that's because they decided to go with Corning Gorilla Glass rather than anything else. And the main reason for that is that no one else is really making watch crystals in the United States currently, except for Corning making them for some smartwatches. Now, while I do think this is pretty cool from a technological standpoint, the real question is how does it perform? And that is actually kind of a hard question to answer because there aren't too many watches like this around. Theoretically, if you're talking about hardness of the material, I think this Gorilla Glass is about a 6.7 on the Mohs hardness scale, while regular mineral is 6. Yet that's still a pretty far cry from Sapphire at 9. So if I had to guess, I'd say it's slightly better than mineral, but not significantly. Although from a more practical standpoint, all you really have to do is think about how many scratched or cracked cell phones you've seen. Now below that crystal, we have what I think is the biggest issue with this watch, and that's the dial. And I know everyone's tastes are different, so I'm sure there are a few people that really love this look. But for me, it's just a little boring and just looks like something you could get on any other Timex. And the only thing that really makes this watch as a whole stand out and be kind of special is the case. Which I do like, it's just this dial's kind of boring. And honestly, I think you really, really need to up your strap game just to make this watch interesting because of it. Not to mention, there's just way too much text here, especially at the top. Where I think it's really just trying too hard. It's like it's holding up a sign saying, hey, look at me, I'm special. But the thing is, anyone who's going to buy this already knows why the watch is special. So I think it's kind of redundant and they just would have been better off if they just said Timex. Now, according to Timex, this is a double layer dial where both layers are made from US source brass. And then it's all triple printed to create dimensional markings, which does sound great. But the thing is, I don't really see a whole lot of dimensional anything going on here except for maybe that small indentation for the small second hand. Otherwise, it's all a bit flat. I mean, this is kind of like the Florida of watches, including a nice sinkhole in the middle. Really, I can just go on and on and kind of nitpick this thing to death, but I think the images here really tell the whole story. I usually think of my macro shots as really being the highlight of my reviews, but here, they're just plain boring. Not to mention, I think the hands and maybe that date cutout do look a little rough for the price. Now, I'm all for bringing American watchmaking back, but in some ways, it's kind of like taking someone who's been into an accident and bringing them to physical rehab. They're really just going to have to learn to walk again, and along the way, there is going to be the occasional slip and fall. But no matter what, they're not going to succeed unless they keep trying and keep experimenting, just really trying to find their footing. But unfortunately, I think the American Documents is one of those falls. Overall, I love the idea of the American Documents, and I'm fully on board the dream of bringing back American watchmaking, even at a higher cost. The thing is, in order for this to happen, you still have to have a product that people will want and be able to justify paying more for. And for me, I think the American Documents just really miss that mark. And it's not that it's just simple looking. I mean, there are plenty of expensive watches out there that are really simple looking. I think a bigger problem, however, is that it's just kind of boring. Now, I think the main competition for this watch, or at least the customer base that Timex is going for, are like Shinola customers. And when I compare this to some of the Shinolas I've looked at, I think Timex actually has the better case. But the dial and the hands, I mean, they're just so much more interesting on a Shinola which I think just makes for a more interesting watch in general. 
However, the big sin for the American Document series, or at least what I think its critical failure is, is that it really just looks like any other Timex. And I know that's kind of the point, and not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just when you're trying to get people to spend this much, it really needs to be special. It just needs to stand apart from your other products. And a good example of this is their new automatic release. It has a really good looking dial, a nice custom rotor, and just this really, really cool skeletonized case, which does come with a bit of a price tag, but it definitely has a look that sets it apart from other Timexes, which is exactly what the American Document series needs, just a dial that sets it apart so that it looks different and isn't just conceptually different. At least that's my opinion on it. But let me know what your opinion on all of this is, or if you think there are some other Timexes I should take a look at in the future. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.